Hey, this is Rich from Tennessee Homestead. How the heck are you today? Hey, today we're going to be talking about cattle. Uh, which ones do a little better in the high temperatures? And uh, don't get me wrong, all cattle will will you can will survive hot temperatures. They they know how to find shade, getting get in a stock pond, whatever to protect themselves. But a cow that can deal with the heat better ends up out on the pasture grazing more each day, spends more hours grazing, and therefore they put on weight a little better. Okay, that's the big difference. Uh, and sometimes uh, you'll, you'll see a, a huge difference between different breeds. So anyway, that's uh, pretty much what we're going to teach you here today is how to pick a breed or at least a, even an individual cow that will do the heat a little bit better and what you're going to be looking for in that cow radiator. So let's get started. let's get going here the first breed we're going to look at is black angus and this is a popular cow even in the deep south all right but you need to take a look at its cow radiator and if you're looking at the cow radiator and see how small it is you begin to go hmm this one's going to spend a lot of time under a shade tree and when i'm talking about the cow radiators i'm talking about their ears a lot of blood gets pumped through a cow's ears and it's used though you'll see them the hotter it gets the more they fan them ears uh, and what it does, it cools down their blood and brings their body temperatures down. It's that simple, okay? Some breeds actually use their horns, too. There's a lot of blood flowing through their horns, and they'll use that to help keep them cool. But that's what it's all about. Now, the Angus does real well in colder temperatures, okay? Basically because of that same reason, smaller ear, okay? It keeps their body temperature up. They're not cold and, and huddled together somewhere. So the Black Angus is extremely popular in north and south and in and, and assorted climates. They originally come out of England, so uh, they're a great, great animal to have on, uh, on your homestead. The meat marbleizes beautifully. It's a good, solid beef cow, okay? Uh, it's really the backbone of the beef industry. So wouldn't be a bit afraid of having a, a Black Angus other than the fact that other breeds would come on a little stronger. Now, you've also got the Red Angus, and if you've got kids that you're going to have running around in pastures, this is a wonderful selection for a beef cow, because they are a very docile animal, okay? They're, they're, they're like a dog, <laughs> just really laid back and easy going, uh, and good beef producers, all right? So you've got the best of both worlds there, especially with kids. Now, this next breed, not good with kids, I'll tell you that now, and that's the Brahma. They got a little bit of attitude, and even around adults, you need to keep your eyeball on the Brahmas. Uh, but they are an excellent, even tropical weather cow, and you can see by those radiators hanging off the side of their head, they do well at cooling their body down in extreme temperatures. They, the Brahma has a tremendous ear on it. I used to think that the Brahmas didn't get chewed on by the, um, by the horse flies as bad because of those ears. And truly, they, they do help them keep the, swap the flies off. But I've also found that there's something in their blood that, they, that the uh, horse flies aren't really crazy about. They're pretty much going to be the last 
cow chewed on in a pasture. All right. Uh, it's just something in their blood that uh, horse flies don't care for the taste. All righty, now we're coming to my favorite breed, and that's the Brangus. Uh, the Brangus is 93% Angus uh, with 7% Brahma. That's the registered Brangus. Now, you can see by their ears, uh, they have a much larger ear than the Angus, which allows them to stay on pasture longer and put on more weight during the heat of the summer. But I've also, through the Brangus, discovered that it's something in the blood of the Brahma that they don't, horse flies don't much care for. Because they, they here again, the Brangus will be chewed on only out if there's nothing else out there for them to chew, the horse flies to chew on. So it's a very good breed. Uh, they're polled like the Angus are, where you don't have to deal with horns. And like I said, they're, they're just a good, uh, solid beef cow. Uh, produce a nice marbleized meat. Uh, they do very well in the summertime uh, in the south and good breed to have on your homestead. All right, let's get back to this. Uh, beef master. Uh, that's a unique animal right there. Uh, wouldn't call it really totally as docile as the red Angus, uh, but it is a pretty easy going cow. As you can see, it's got fairly large ears, so it does well in the heat. And produces good meat and it doesn't marbleize quite as well as like an Angus or a Brangus does. Uh, you'd have to feed them out a lot longer to get good marbleization of the meat but it is possible. Uh, good solid cow and if you were looking for raising cattle for just grass-fed beef uh, on market uh, this is a good one to do it with. It has a uh, uh, tremendous uh, flavor to the meat. Uh, because it, it just uh, has, it has a unique taste. So good cow to, to work with. Now, Texas Longhorns. <laughs> I don't have a lot of experience with that. I, I knew a fellow that raised them. Uh, but here again, now the Texas Longhorn, you'll, you'll see, has a fairly small ear. It's not a good picture for you, but, uh, uh, but they do have extremely long horns, thus the name. They do very well in hot, dry climates. Uh, they, <laughs> I refer to the longhorn as the goats of cows. Uh, <laughs> they'll eat anything. So they do well on poor land. Uh, so if you've got some really nasty pastures that a normal cow turns its nose up at, a longhorn will get out there and graze that down for you and probably fertilize it for you. But like I said, it is a horned cow, and I, I have to warn folks, horned cows don't end up killing you by, you know, meanness. They just do it by accident. Now the Charlet. The Charlet doesn't have a real huge ear. It's, it's about a medium-sized ear. Uh, but it has one thing going for it. It's color. It's white. It reflects heat very well. The cow does well in hot weather. Very popular in the South. Um, good producers as far as, as calving. Uh, these girls are just solid as rocks. Um, the bulls can be a little bit to deal with. They they do have, they're pretty spirited. Okay, so it's not something you'd want around uh, children because they they can spook easy, and that is something about the Charley uh, breed. They are a very easily spooked animal. Okay, anything new uh, bothers them a lot, okay? Uh, all cows are like that to some degree, but the Charlets really can get unpredictably spooky. The next one is, uh, I think it's pronounced Watusi, and I just put it in here to show you how some uh, tropical cattle, and this is an African breed, uh, doesn't use its ears really to cool itself with. It uses horns. Uh, check the rack out on that one. I did see a couple of videos on guys that raise these uh, here in the States and from what I saw these things are a real pill to work with. A uh, very spooky animal and when you're dealing with getting them into a trailer or run them through a, you know, a head gate or anything like that those horns definitely become a huge obstacle to you. <laughs> okay. And uh, I could imagine it'd be easy to get one of those uh, stuck in your rear, uh, you know, just from the cow grazing nearby. Okay, it's 
kind of a wild thing. Now, this breed here, uh, they mix a lot of different things. Uh, Angus Brangus uh, with Herefords uh, to come up with the white face, the black white face. Here in the south and in a lot of regions of the country, this is an extremely popular animal. Uh, more or less, it's a good one to raise if you're if you're looking to market uh, uh, your cows easily. They are well known. They're known for a good disposition and good at the trough. I'm, uh, they're they're little trough hogs. Okay, if there's food to be had, they're going to have their face in it. Uh, but solid cow marbles marbleize uh, the meat much like an Angus does. Uh, and it's probably because of the crossbreeding with the Angus and the Brangus and so forth. So, good cow, uh, a good commercial cow. That's what you see them used a lot. And there is just an assortment of specialty uh, tropical cows out there. Okay. My word of warning on getting into specialty animals, unless you have a market and you know you have a market for them, you're running a heck of a risk. Okay, because uh, the average stockman wants to go with a breed that he knows. You know, if you're dealing with like the Angus, the Charlays, the Brangus, uh, the the Black White Face, these are all well-known cows to most stockmen. They've worked with them, they've had them, they know their traits, they know what these cows are all about. Thus, they become a higher ticket item uh, to somebody out buying livestock. So always keep that in mind. I mean, there's a, there's some wild-looking cows out there, folks, uh, especially in these tropical varieties. But the main thing you want to do is make sure that you can make money. Okay, that green stuff that helps keep your lights turned on. So to do that, you're going to need to go with a breed that has a large market and there my my recommendation would be Angus, Brangus, uh, both the reds and the blacks and if you're really wanting to raise cattle and and build a herd what you want to consider first and foremost is a good nurse cow. Um, average beef cow does not make a good nurse cow. It's hard to graft a calf onto them. A Jersey uh, makes an excellent uh, nurse cow. They really do. And if you get them bred and they put, produce you like an Angus Jersey uh, heifer, you might want to hang on to that because they usually are some of the easiest to graft to and very, uh, very great nurse cows. They'll, they'll take on two calves with no problem. So, you know, when considering this, uh, if you're looking at... Uh, you know, raising cattle and making money with them, a good nurse cow is extremely valuable uh, because stuff happens. You, you lose a mother and childbirth, different things of this nature. You can get some cholesterol uh, and feed into that calf, but then you want to get it on a nurse cow so as possible. Same thing with you, it allows you to buy bottle calves, and uh, uh, bottle calves will do much better if you graft them onto a nurse cow. So, that's my opinion, and you can talk to 15 other stockmen, and I'm sure they're going to all have their own opinions. But uh, those are the breeds that I like, and I hope this helped you out a little bit. Y'all have a great day. Talk to you later.